Luka Doncic is one of my favorite players in the entire NBA. I said at the time of his draft that he should have gone first overall over DeAndre Ayton, over Jaron Jackson Jr., over Trey Young, over all those guys in that class. He's so creative, fun to watch, so unbelievably skilled. However, there is a problem potentially developing in Dallas that needs to be discussed with Luka Doncic. Now, to be absolutely clear, Luka has been unbelievable at the start of his NBA career. It's really difficult to find any player throughout the history of the league that has been as statistically productive, as immediate as Luka has been in his career, not to mention some playoff success as well. Some upsets and some playoff series and him individually in the postseason, his stats are unbelievable. But there's one parallel that really can concerns me when it comes to Luka. One player that you can compare him to that some people even compared him to before the draft that really makes me worried about what his path looks like in Dallas moving forward. And that player is James Harden. There were some of these comparisons before the draft because obviously he's limited athletically. Harden's not the quickest player in the world, but he just has a way to get to his spots, get to the rim, draw fouls, the step back three stuff, of course. And that style of play, that everything is about me, isolation, ball screen, every time down the floor, no movement off the ball, no effort defensively, that is something that he has really formed himself into as a player and that's concerning for the future of the Mavericks. Now, I'm not trying to say that James Harden is a terrible player or anything. I mean, this guy's a multiple time MVP and I think Luka's on that level as well. He's someone that could be winning an MVP down the road. But when it comes to winning basketball, putting together a team that has a legitimate chance to win a title the way that Dallas hopes to be over the next few seasons, it really causes a lot of problems within your team because there are so many clips just like this one that you're seeing on screen where nobody else on the floor is even remotely involved unless Luka wants them to be involved. Everything is an isolation or a ball screen around Luka and you've got all these floor spacers and you've got a guy rolling to the rim and that's it. And I mean, it's been effective, certainly during the regular season. There have been times where Dallas has been historically great offensively before even bringing in someone like Kyrie Irving, who we're going to talk about his impact later on in the video. But this heliocentric style, this one guy or nothing style really concerns me, especially once it gets time to go into the postseason and win some big time games. And again, with Luka, we have seen that already. We know what that looks like. But there's a difference between upsetting a team in one postseason series and actually being a legit legit threat in the playoffs. And what Dallas has tried to do throughout Luka's career is create a situation similar to what Harden had in Houston. And Harden had some awesome teams in Houston. Without the Kevin Durant era Golden State Warriors, it's pretty easy to argue that Houston would have made the finals and or won a title for a couple of seasons there in Houston. And at times, I even thought that the Rockets were better than the KD era Warriors in one specific season. So I'm not trying to say that you can't be successful with this mindset, but Dallas is definitely trying to follow this blueprint. And that blueprint is try and make ourselves as good as we possibly can defensively, even with the defensive liability like Luka on the floor. You can surround them with a ton of shooters with some some guys that can protect the rim and we know that our offense is going to be elite when Luka's out there we know that when we get to the postseason Luka is going to play 40 plus minutes a game and there's just nothing the other team can do our offense is always going to be more efficient than theirs because our best player is better than theirs and everything revolves around that guy and on paper that's fine but when you think about some of the most successful teams in the league over the last couple of seasons teams that win titles teams that make the finals they don't play basketball like this. This is an idea that came about during this kind of analytics revolution really brought on by people like James Harden, by Daryl Morey. Free throws, threes, as efficient as you can be from a numbers perspective with isolations and ball screens and have your best player run everything every time down the floor. And that makes sense, but you have to understand what that does to the other players on the floor what that does for the other guys that are just standing in the corner, standing on the wing. They're not a threat at all. And you have to understand what that does to the primary player in a much more physical postseason series, a much more tiring postseason series, where it's just gonna take more out of you when you're in the Western Conference Finals trying to carry your team offensively every time down the floor than it is in a random game in the middle of December. And what this style results in is yes, fantastic stats for Luka, both in the regular as well as in the postseason, and at times a lot of success for Dallas, just like it was for Houston, but it creates this environment where you're not empowering any of the other players on the roster outside of your main star, or in this case, stars. And what Dallas is hoping is that Kyrie Irving can be the Chris Paul to Luka Doncic's James Harden. They're hoping that he is the off-ball guy that can take some of the offense responsibility off Luka, and then when Luka does sit down, that Kyrie can then run the offense and continue to keep them afloat while they're waiting for Luka to get back on the floor. And there are so many similarities between this Dallas team and those Houston teams. 
Now, the difference between Kyrie and Chris Paul's games is very clear. Chris Paul, even though he is very controlling in terms of always wanting to be on the ball, he's a better playmaker. He's a much more willing passer, much more of a true point guard than Kyrie Irving will ever be. And Kyrie, of course, is more about scoring, getting to the rim and doing everything as an individual. I'm not saying that that won't work, but adding that element into Luka already being that kind of player can definitely cause you some issues. And I'm not trying to say that if, if Dallas doesn't make the conference finals or the finals this year, that somehow this is a failure and it's Luka's fault and that this, this kind of style of play is the reason why they won't accomplish their goals. It's very likely that they can play this way play really well this year and win a playoff series or two and look pretty solid. But when you look at what you want to be long term as a team, what you want to continue to develop Luca into, it would be nice to see a little bit more off ball movement from him. It would be nice to see a little bit more defensive effort from him. But typically when players get to be this good, when you are just like Luca is an MVP caliber guy, it's hard to then change into a different kind of player. It's hard to suddenly become someone like Steph Curry that's running around off the ball. It's hard to become someone that is suddenly moving the ball and swinging it to guys that are just not as good offensively and not understanding the value of getting those guys involved is something that's really difficult to overcome for a lot of players, especially guys that have been as successful as Luka has, not just in Dallas, but throughout the entirety of his professional basketball career. And the reason really this is a problem for Dallas is you can be on the coaching staff and you can recognize that maybe there is a better way to play. Maybe there is a way to get Luca to be a little bit more involved when it's not just him running isolations and running ball screens. Maybe you can allow him to understand that there is more effort to be given on the defensive end of the floor. And you can know that as a coaching staff. But at this point, Dallas is very much where Houston was with Harden, where you can know the things to say. You can know how to improve your team around Luka. You can know how to get Luka to play better, but you can't really tell him that because you don't want to risk upsetting him. You don't want to risk him, you know, getting uncomfortable in a situation where he has clearly become very comfortable being the guy and playing in this particular way. And you almost just have to accept that this is what your team is going to look like because you don't want to lose the guy. Because even as much as you can criticize him for different things, as I've done throughout this video, you still have to understand that he's one of the best players in the league. He's still young. He's still going to continue to grow and develop. And you still might have a chance to win a title even with him playing this way. And even if you feel like there are adjustments to be made, it's gone on for so long throughout the entirety of his career where you can't now just turn around and say, hey, we want you to play a completely different style now. And by the way, also, please don't leave us and or request a trade. That's the reality of the modern NBA. That's the reality of where Luka has grown to in his status in the NBA. And it's just not a conversation that you can have. And this upcoming season with Dallas is going to be incredibly telling in terms of how far that particular style can go. Because when you look at the roster outside of having obviously better players on the wing and better bigs, this is pretty much as good as you can expect a roster to be around someone like Luca. because adding another star, adding someone else alongside Kyrie and Luca doesn't really elevate you any further. It's kind of redundant. You already have two awesome offensive players. Your offense is going to be great when those two guys are on the floor, and they're not going to give you much defensively anyway. So until you get to the level of those Houston teams where they had all these different wings and all this spacing and great rim rolling bigs, you're not really going to reach that much higher of a ceiling with the way that this roster is currently constructed. And they could be awesome. They could be a top three team in the West this year. The Luka Kyrie thing could really work or more likely in an absolutely loaded conference, we could see a team that is struggling to even get to 45 wins. And suddenly you're looking at your roster and you're wondering, are there ways that we can fix this? Or is this just the position that we have put ourselves in over the years by pushing Luka towards this James Harden heliocentric style of basketball? Even though he is so unbelievably talented, have, have we almost doomed ourselves by empowering him this much? And that is the Luka problem.